Danny, I just figured out that if I switch to Metro PCS, I get two Samsung Galaxy phones free. Cool, Dad. And I could be a super dad with two free Samsung Galaxy phones and call myself Double Galaxy Man. Or you could give the second phone to your sidekick. Yeah, I guess I could do that. That's right. Two free Samsung Galaxy On5 smartphones are all yours when you switch to Metro PCS. Metro PCS. Wireless figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets so you can realize your dreams and life purpose and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. Good day, good day, everyone. It is a beautiful December day, and we are uh, coming to you all about Ask Bernadette today. This is your day to ask your business, life, and career questions, and uh, we are winding down 2016. It's unbelievable that uh, we be at December 6th already, uh, but we are, and that's reality. Uh, But what we are planning to do this entire month is kind of um, continue the momentum, continue the energy, continue the focus on what it is that you are pursuing in your life, while at the same time kind of reflecting back as to how 2016 rolled out to you, against what it is that you planned. At the same time, what are you planning for in 2017 and what can we do here in the Shed in the Bitch community to help you with that. So today is Ask Bernadette, your day to ask those career, business, and life questions. And I've got a number of them lined up. But at the same time, you can always call 1-818-572-2910 with your questions. You can post them on Facebook or Twitter. Deborah's out there, Deborah Parker of Parker House Virtual Services, and she'll pass them to me as well. I'm watching online. I am videotaping today's um, uh, program, so then I can splice it up and provide you the output to the questions that you're asking as rich tips on our Shed in the Bitch YouTube channel. So there's a lot of little things going on uh, around me, and uh, we are all geared up and uh, ready to take on whatever it is that kind of keeping you stuck possibly, or maybe you just need some advice or guidance or some answers to some things. Maybe you are working hard, you're um, delivering hard, you're getting great results, and yet you want to up-level. A lot of people, I ask if they hesitate to ask questions because they don't want to appear as if they don't know something. Well, guess what? I probably, you know, ask a handful of questions to various people online or in person or on a phone call each and every day, and I would hope to God that I don't stop answering or asking questions until I'm in the grave. So don't hesitate to ask for your um, advice or for your, I'm sorry, for your um, problem or the challenge you might be having or simply um, you just need some, a little bit of a shove in a certain direction. Don't hesitate to go out and get it wherever that might be. Uh, and here on the Shed the Bitch radio program is one of those places, and then we are uh, working to provide you more and more ways and means for you to do that in the coming new year. So speaking of which, if you haven't already, I would love you to join our private Facebook group. Uh, many of you do say that you hesitate asking a question or, or putting an issue that you're having online for the world to see or for the world to hear, whatever the case might be. Of course, you can always call us into us, and you never have to give us your name. But our private group on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash shift to riches, that's our private group, 
that will allow you to, in a very safe environment, amongst people who also want to come into a very safe, collaborative, energized, and supportive group, and ask the, the questions or tell the stories or share with us whatever it is that you need to or want to right there in that group. Um, but we are going to look for ways throughout 2017 to uh, engage more and more with you because the one thing I don't want you to do is be sitting at home feeling like you're alone or feeling you're going to be judged or feel as if you're going to, you know, uh, not get the support that you need. And Shed the Bitch community is the safe, collaborative, supportive space with a lot of energy and a lot of fun, I would hope, and for you to get your questions answered, all right? And through the month of December, we're going to be bringing you experts and topics that will kind of allow you to assess 2016 and look forward into 2017 to plan your goals and objectives, um, as well as the measurements, as well as identifying what stitches are going to get in your way um, as far as you achieving your goals so we can work preventively and proactively to address those things as we go forward. All right. Uh, let's see, some other rich news. Uh, I hope, uh, I guess we've met since Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, I believe we have. Um, December is kind of going with a bang, and uh, we are finally getting tons of rain here in Atlanta, so excuse the kind of background noise if you happen to hear any, but if that sounds maybe like raindrops. Uh, but uh, we are getting rain that we much need, so uh, no one here is going to be complaining. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then, like I said, December is you know, going to be packed with more conversation in regards to things that are uh, impacting women today in their career, business, or life. All right, we're going to take a short break. I'm going to take a breath since that little technical issue uh, that kind of a little air out of my steam, and then when we come back, we're going to dive into the list of questions. But again, if you have a question and you're out there, I'm watching you on chat. Deborah's keeping an eye on you out there as well. If you have a question regarding your career, business, or life that you would like to discuss or get some advice and tips um, around, please call 1-818-572-2910. You can even go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Shedding the Bitch Radio, and you can chat with us. And I'm at keeping an eye on the chat room. And then at the same time, anytime, even after the program's aired live, and maybe you're downloading this like many of you do, you can always go to our Shedding the Bitch Facebook page and pose your question there. All right? So we're going to take a little break, a little breath, and we'll be right back and dive into the questions that you have for Ask Bernadette Tuesday. Talk to you in a minute. You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business, available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate size clients. Go to tsrconsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at deborahparker78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at Media Relations at SheddingTheBitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Shedding the Bitch Radio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Welcome back, everyone. Yes, this is Ask Bernadette Tuesday, where I am answering your career, business, and life questions and providing some tips, advice, sometimes tough love, in regards to what you could be doing and keep moving yourself forward and creating those riches in your life that you deserve. All right, so first up is 
uh, as we as we talk about, we have career, business, and life questions. We hope to get a blend of all of them in each program, but if not, that's okay too. Uh, but we'll start with um, a business question. How do you say no to a boss? And we'll expand that and say, how do you say no to a boss, to a peer, to a friend, to a family member when you just truly don't want to do something or you don't want to, you don't agree, or maybe um, uh, you're being, um, maybe you're being asked to do something that you don't want to do. Maybe your friend wants you to do something that you don't want to do, and you're accustomed to being a people pleaser. Can I have a show of hands for those that might be people pleasers out there? And uh, yet at the same time, you also recognize that you always saying yes and not standing true to, to what it is that you want and what it is that you believe in is causing you to swirl with not ever getting your things done or achieved. Maybe you just are, um, are getting frustrated at the fact that you're not able to say no. So they ask you to do something that you, that's maybe not in your lane, maybe not part of your role and responsibility. Maybe it's not something that you want to do. And therefore, you need to be able to very effectively um, tell that person no without you know, what, feeling as if you're going to jeopardize your position or your job or anything um, of that matter. Uh, so what do you do in that situation? Well, what you can do is to merely point out, in all fairness to you, that it isn't in your role responsibility. So this particular person, when they brought me this question, the situation that they were in is one of their customers asked them to um, update a process form. This is a, a business question. So they're updating a, a business a process form within their business, and it's typically another department's responsibility, not this individual's responsibility. Not to say that person, you maybe, can't do it. It's just not your job. It's not your role and responsibility to have to do it. So in this situation, she was questioning what she should do in that, in that situation to say, no, I'll pass it on to another department. And I told her, she answered her own question. She basically said and should say, I'm sorry, um, you know what, I'll, I'll do you a favor and I'll pass this on to the customer service department and, allow, and mention to them that you'd like this business process form to be updated. And what would that individual respond? They're not going to respond, well, no, don't do that. Um, most likely they'll respond, okay, thank you very much. Uh, most likely they'll respond, okay, you know, just simply okay. And, in, and you're still able to kind of hold your ground in that this isn't work you're supposed to be doing, it's work someone else is supposed to be doing, and therefore you'll pass it on. So if you're asked to do, have, to do something, if you're asked to um, uh, go somewhere that is not really in your uh, role or responsibility, it's not in something that you want to be doing, then just stay true to yourself and simply uh, diplomatically say, I'd love to, however, this is someone else's role or responsibility, this is someone else's task to be, to be done, I'd be more than happy to pass that on. Um, you know, I'm not really in the mood or in, in a place to want to go there today, maybe another time, or just not in my, in my interest. A friend of mine and I always tend to go back and forth when it when it comes to going to movies. I tend to have a certain uh, flavor of movie that I'd like to go and certainly do not like certain other movies like sci-fi. I'm not a sci-fi fan. I'm not a horror fan. I'm not even really a uh, psychological thriller fan. I'm into more of the lighthearted stuff. And so we go back and forth. And I'll simply say, you know what, that's just not of interest to me. You have the right to say, Something's not of interest to you, or it's not my role or responsibility. And as opposed to fearing that, you should consider that someone's going to respect, respect you for being upfront and honest about that. Um, so if you are questioning 
what can you do it to say no when it's from a boss or a peer or a friend and you're accustomed to kind of being a people pleaser? Well, maybe what you need to also think about is that people pleasing, that people is you. You need to be able to please yourself. And therefore, the only way you're going to be able to please yourself is by saying no. And just find a diplomatic and direct way of saying that. And if the other person is worth their grain of salt, then they're going to be okay with that and respect the fact that you're not necessarily not going to look at it as standing up for yourself, but you're basically saying what it is that you truly feel. And because there's a lot of camps of people that don't like people pleasing. They don't like someone always saying yes. They want to know that someone actually has a spine. And secondly, and more importantly, what I need you to think about is if you're always saying yes to someone and you're always people pleasing and it's draining you, it's, um, it's causing you frustration or stress and it's taking you out of your lane of what's important to you and what you value, and therefore other people obviously aren't valuing that, well, one, you're doing a disservice to yourself, and you need to look inward to identify those bitches, so to speak, that are causing you to not stand true to what you want and what you believe in. And what is that um, worth or that value you're putting on you being happy and you being pleased, not just pleasing someone else. So the next time you want to say no, simply step back and kind of identify and justify why you want to say no. Come up with that reasoning. It's not my job. It's not something that I have any interest in doing. It's not um, kind of true to who I am. And voice that. And provide that back to whoever it is that's asking you to do something you just really don't want to do and you shouldn't do. And whether it's a boss or a customer or a peer or a colleague or a friend, they should only respect you for that. And if they don't, then that's actually a lot of information that you should take and make note of for uh, working with and, and handling that individual going forward because we should all respect someone standing true to what it is that they like, dislike, and who they are as an individual. All right? You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch. Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business. Available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate-sized clients. Go to TSRConsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium-sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at... Deborah Parker 78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at mediarelations at sheddingthebitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash sheddingthebitchradio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Welcome back, everyone. This is Ask Bernadette. Bring me your business, career, and life questions, and I'll provide you some tips, advice, and sometimes tough love in regards to them. And at the same time, we're working today to videotape this as well so I can slice them up and provide you rich tips out on our Shedding the Bitch video channel, so you can always go there as well. So, moving on to our next question. Our next question is all regarding, uh, I call it gossiping or just merely calling it a major faux pas on someone's part. But this individual's boss, 
shared with their team, with his team, of which she's a part of, but she wasn't in this particular meeting, that she was going to be assigned a new role and position, and yet she had not even been told about it. Okay, did you get that? So the question was, what do I do when my boss shares with peers, with others, especially team members, that she has a new role and position, and yet she hasn't even been told about it yet. She's actually hearing it, um, you know, from other parties, her team members, outside of any conversation that she's had with her boss. Well, all I can, oh, all I can say to that is, oh, that really sucks. <laughs> and yet, it, it's not the first time I've heard it, and personally, I've experienced it myself. And it is definitely something that can take your breath away um, once you, if you're the, the victim in this case, uh, learn of it. It does. It causes you to just go, what in the world? And you get all anxious and excited and, and not in a good way excited. And you just start swirling ideas in your head, which just takes you out of any of the productivity or any of the, the reality that you're, that you're just working in. And it can really send people into a tailspin, uh, which is one thing I wish that, that individual, that manager, realized that when he, and as he's going and sharing information that he hasn't even disclosed yet to the person impacted, um, if he only realized the effect that that little tidbit of information is going to have, not only on their team, because obviously that team went, went away and started gossiping and and was intrigued and curious and started poking around, to get the individual being um, impacted now is in a spiral down, downturn. Fortunately, she picked up the phone and called me before she allowed herself to go too far into that uh, abyss, so to speak, um, and simply asked, what do I do in this situation? And I told her immediately, um, to one, first off, take a deep breath and calm herself down. Calm down, you know, herself before even the situation calm down. But just to take a deep breath, she did not want to move forward, and you never want to move forward in addressing anything coming at it in a very emotional mindset. Uh, because that's where a lot of the... Um, a lot of the breakdown of communication happens. That's when a lot of the anger and the hurt and the pain is created, let alone felt or um, exasperated. It's because we don't take a moment to just kind of sit with something, with whether or not it's a decision that needs to be made or whether or not it's a piece of gossip that's heard, uh, whether or not it's a situation that just, happen to us. Um, we just don't take a moment to just breathe. So first off, I would recommend anybody in kind of having an immediate jerk to their foundation to just kind of first breathe before reacting. Because you're not responding, you're reacting, and reacting is not always a good thing. So I just ask her to take a deep breath and breathe. And then what I suggested to her and I would suggest to you is kind of formulate your conversation, formulate your plan, uh, formulate, formulate um, what it is that you need to go and address with this individual, uh, in this case for boss. So kind of clear the head first and then um, make sure that you are um, you are uh, formulating how this conversation should go. You certainly want to tackle it head on. Now, tackling it head on doesn't mean that you kind of grab on that throat and you know it doesn't have to be anything aggressive. It just needs to be assertive. You need to be able to share with him first off, asking for an explanation and for clarity. And at the same time, also addressing the, the point straight on as to why that was shared with other people prior to yourself, because it just created X, Y, and Z. Not only for them, 
but for you and for the boss themselves. This isn't a good thing to the boss, let alone for you or for your peers. Your boss is also impacted as a result of um, what it is that he's now kind of um, guilty of doing. It's not good for a boss to be sharing information that, you know, hasn't been disclosed to the, especially to the people that are directly involved. Uh, so this, this is a situation that all three parties are being impacted by and therefore has to get addressed. So she needs to kind of get her head on straight, get clear about what it is that she wants to talk to him about, and then to go and with a, you know, kind of a breath, you know, being held, address it calmly and pointedly uh, in order to get it kind of resolved and moved on. But I was glad that she didn't go and, and kind of stomp into his office or pick up the phone right away. We never want to do that when, when we have this sudden jerk to our foundation, as I said before. You want to kind of be able to go at it very logically, logically, unemotionally, and get the solution or get the answer that um, you need as opposed to allowing it to kind of create this flurry of emotion, not only from you, but now with anybody else around that you're engaging with to kind of get the issue, get the issue resolved. Does that make sense? Um, so I just suggested that, uh, I just suggested that she, that she sit down, take a deep breath, write out what it is that she wants to get addressed with him, you know, even bulletize the point of discussion, um, have an idea of what, you know, what is the end result of that conversation, and then to just approach it very logically. And that's how we have to ha handle a lot of it, any situations that come up like that. Just lay out a plan of how you're going to address it, how you're going to confront it, how you're going to combat it, whatever the situation is, and do it coming from a logical place as opposed to an emotional place. All right? Okay, we're going to take another brief break, and um, we'll be right back and continue our career, business, and life questions on Ask Bernadette on this episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business, available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate-sized clients. Go to TSRConsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium-sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at DebraParker78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at MediaRelations at SheddingTheBitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Shedding the Bitch Radio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Welcome back, everyone. This is Ask Bernadette on this Tuesday's Shedding the Bitch Radio program, and I am answering your career, business, and life questions and providing you some tips, advice, and sometimes tough love. All right? So our next question is all around creativity and the lack thereof. So have you ever had that situation where maybe you, it was a you know, bright and glorious Monday morning and you got up and you were very anxious about starting a new, a new project or maybe a new job or maybe a new uh, program? Uh, maybe you're, you work for yourself and you had this great idea for a new product that you want to take out to the market. Or maybe you, you, at work, working for someone else, you have a great idea for something that you could be leading leading up or working on at work. 
or maybe you're a stay at home and all of a sudden you've got this great idea for something out in the backyard and you you know you're all anxious and excited about going about it and then you jump out of bed you go into work you get out to your computer or you get out to the backyard and you just kind of stand there paralyzed by what to do first <laughs> Have you ever had that situation? Can you relate? Because uh, I certainly can, as a matter of fact. Um, I should have known that this day was going to kind of uh, roll out the way it has because this morning I got up with all kinds of gusto, went and visited a friend, and was all pumped up with some great ideas as I got to my workspace, sat down, and stared at a white screen for about 15 minutes and had no idea and had no idea as to um, what I, you know, what I really wanted to write about or what I wanted to uh, work on, I just kind of sat there and stared at my computer. So what happens when you have all these great ideas and you're, you know, you're, you're feeling creative and yet you're, you're just feeling like you don't know um, what to do first? Well, that is a lot um, – well, what I, would, what I really want to say is that's an easy problem to solve when you're in that space. You know why? Because there was only maybe one thing potentially missing from your plan. Do you have any idea what that is? Raise a hand. Anybody? Yeah, you have this great amount of energy to go and start something that you have a great idea about, and yet you're kind of sitting there void, vacant, absent of any type of activity or motion. What are we missing? You're missing the plan. <laughs> you're missing the plan of how you're going to uh, take action or pursue that burst of idea or that burst of creativity or that burst of, of, um, of uh, momentum. You have the momentum, you have the energy, you have your mojo, and yet you don't have a plan. And that's an easy problem to solve because you know what? You just sit down and, and make out a plan. Now, a lot of people get stuck, and I absolutely love talking about goals and about you know defining plans and time management. I love it because it is, it is such an easy problem to solve that if you just sit down and you write out what it is that you're, you want to do. So say it is that backyard project, or it is that new role that you'd be playing at work, or maybe you do come up with a new product and program, you know, for your own business that you want to start, you know, creating and rolling out. Well, you do need to start somewhere, so don't get also tripped up by anybody expressing to you you have to come up with a plan. Plans sound very um, overwhelming, sound very involved. Oh, my gosh, now I have to take time to sit down and make out a plan? Are you kidding me? And you can even come back and say that to me as your own coach, and I would un totally understand your, your position. But all I'm saying is a plan only really can start with one thing. If you wanted that project or that role or that product, Simply sit down and map out the first thing you need to do in order to get that new initiative, let's call it, moving forward. So regardless of what, what those examples were, the first thing could be, okay, let me put more thought and idea behind that raw project or product that I want to come up with. What is it? What does it look like? What's the end state of it that I want it to be? That is your first step. So you don't even have to think about steps two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you don't want to, just start somewhere. And so many of us get tripped up and we get stuck and paralyzed because we don't even think about that very first step we need to take. So let me give you a for instance. I get up. I get all energized this morning. I come in to the workspace. I'm staring at this white screen. I start writing and nothing is coming to me. So what do I do? I don't stop. I don't give up. I continue to write. And you know what I landed up writing about? I landed up writing about the fact that I was staring at a white screen without any creative idea or inspiration going on in, in, in between my ears. Um, and that was exactly what 
I was writing about, and it turned out that, you know, the lesson learned was, you know, you don't always have the answers. You don't always have that burst of inspiration. And yet, that's okay. Just do something. So I kind of forced myself to continue typing and writing something. And you can go to showingthebitch.com and see if it, it makes even any sense to you, the blog post I just put out there this morning. But my point being is at least I kept – I, I kept doing something. The one thing, to bring it back to the plan, the one thing I said to myself in that post as I was writing and feeling very void and absent of any type of creative idea to share with you, I just made sure the plan involved the fact that I wanted to get a, a piece of writing done because I committed to doing that on a more regular basis. And so void of any specific type of, of idea, or even the idea I came in to write about, um, I couldn't put two words together when it came to it. I at least pushed myself to come up with the one thing that was on my, my plan of three things, and that was at least to get some words on paper. Now, of course, I want them to make sense. You can tell me that, yay or nay, uh, when you read the blog post. But my point is, if you're lacking creativity, be okay with it. You don't have to have this aha moment every time you set out to do something. So whether it's working in the backyard or it's working on a new project at work or, or creating a new product, just take a first step as, as your plan. And that first step will then lead you into a second, third, or fourth step. And if it doesn't and you're still feeling kind of uninspired, you're feeling uh, vacant or void or just, you can't put two words together, you know what? Be okay with that and put it aside maybe. Put it aside and move on to thinking about something else, putting your energies elsewhere. And if that initial thing that you wanted to be pursuing was still important to you, then it'll, it'll bubble up. But you have to kind of let that anxiety in your head, that, that kind of frustration that you can't put two words together, you can't you know, come up with a creative idea in your mind, you have to put it aside because if you don't, that frustration is going to drive you crazy, right? That frustration is just going to have you, it's going to eat at you. And you're, you need to just kind of be okay with the fact that you can't come up with um, anything, you know, juicy or inspiring or, uh, you know, or new or fresh. Be okay with that. Kind of walk away from it. Give it some breathing room. And, it'll, and most likely it will come back around. And you know what? If it doesn't, that's okay, too. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be. Maybe you were pushing or forcing something that really shouldn't have been there. And be okay with that as well. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. We're going to keep going since we have taken a, a, a bunch of breaks already. I want to make sure I can get in, in the questions that you all have already um, asked about, but at the same time, if you do, if you're listening to the program, whether live, you can call 1-818-572-2910 to ask your question. Uh, I am having a little difficulty. I will tell you I'm having a little difficulty with the chat room at the moment. I keep trying it in case you're going out in this chat room. Oh, there it is. Hello. Um, and uh, so you can always go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash shedding the bitch radio go into the chat room and ask me uh, a question there. Uh, you can always post the live broadcast. Just go out to Facebook or Twitter and post it there, and I'd be more than happy to answer it at any time because I do answer your questions the moment I see them come up or the moment you reach out to me or the moment you email me. A lot of you come through LinkedIn to me. Um, I do respond immediately uh, yet, at the same time, bring them here onto our Ask Bernadette on Chesnovich Radio once a month. But just make sure you're asking. Make sure you're getting the support and the, um, and the advice and maybe tough love that you need to just keep moving forward. All right? Okay. Our next question, because I am kind of bouncing around on the questions that have been asked. Um, it is end of year. So I was at a meeting uh, Sunday and was asked about end-of-year assessments. 
what exactly does that mean? What does that look like? What am I supposed to be doing when it comes to really just taking stock at the year that, that has passed? And I can give you a formula, and I'll be posting some things onto our ShuttingTheBench.com blog in the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but I will provide you some tools that you can be using, uh, not only to kind of take assessment of the past year but get ready for the new year, but it really comes down to this. You can even just kind of scribble, scribble this down in, into your journal or just, you know, recall it. Because it really just comes down to, what worked and what didn't work, and what would you do differently? If there were three questions you could ask yourself, and even just take stock, whether that's putting it on a piece of paper, uh, recording it. I, I tend to sometimes like to record things um, as, as I'm kind of processing ideas, processing answers to my own questions that I, that I might be doing, for instance, in my own assessment. Um, you could be talking about it with a friend or a coach or someone else. But simply, what worked, what didn't, and what would you do differently this coming year is really what a, you, know, you could be assessing your time with. Now, why is it important to uh, do an assessment or to assess your productivity or lack thereof um, I, of, of any given point in time? And all I would say to that is, you know, we work really hard, um, and we get we have this one life. We only get one. It goes really fast. And I don't know about you, but I want to be sure that I'm spending the time smartly, as opposed to just spending it potentially spinning my wheels. I don't want to work hard anymore. <laughs> I'm tired. No, I'm not. Um, I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of things I still want to get done. But I want to make sure that if I am working, you know, seven days a week at something, I want to be, make sure I'm doing it smartly. When I do choose to work three days a week at something, I really want to be sure that I'm using that time smartly. And as time goes on, I certainly would love it to go from that, you know, five-day-a-week, 40-hour-a-week to something um, that allows me more flexibility and more time to do more non-business things that I love to do. And I would think you would want to do the same thing. So assessing allows you to just take stock and give yourself kind of a grade without judgment as to whether or not you were putting your time and your effort and your focus where you originally decided you wanted to. Now, I was just reading just this morning, reading an article about why actually some successful people don't set goals because they feel that it immediately limits you. It immediately sets up a, you know, kind of a, a, a level of expectation that doesn't then allow you to push beyond that expectation. And I say to that, <laughs> Um, I say I say that because I I without goals, what is it that you're working toward? So that's kind of the basic premise and foundation that I have, and that I work with my clients around. Is have at least something that you're working toward. So that's your goal. And now, if you set something, say you set something for a hundred dollars, and maybe what they're saying is you stop at a hundred, and you don't push yourself to go to two hundred. Well, to me, that's purely just someone who has low expectations for themselves. Me, I might set, set my goal for 100, but hell, if I make 100 and I still have a lot of time or a lot of leeway between, you know, the end, the end timeline or the end point of which I was going to be working on that goal, I'm going to push myself to 200, to 300, to 400, unless something of greater priority and of greater interest comes along, and now I can kind of say, okay, I've met this goal. Um, I'm going to move over here now. I'm not going to give up on myself and walk away from it, uh, and I'm not necessarily going to um, just abandon it, abandon it if I feel like, okay, that's good enough. It's not wonderful, 
but it's good enough. I'm not a good enough person. I don't believe anyone in my Shed the Bitch community are good enough people. That's why I love you. Um, so I believe that you set goals, you assess your progress towards those goals, you make the adjustments. Maybe at some point that goal isn't the priority you had on it before. And that's the argument, too, that this um, article spoke of is, you know, then people feel obligated to that goal they set and that it was set in some point. And, and they feel as if they're trapped in it. No one's ever said that. No one's ever said you, if you set a goal and you assess your progress toward that goal, your priority toward that goal, your energy and enthusiasm toward that goal, and should you decide that it's not the goal or the priority that you had on it originally, no one's ever, ever said that you should force yourself to finish it regardless. So you just refine your goal. You change it. You enhance it. You totally replace it, whatever the case might be. Assessing, though, yourself along the way as much as at the end of the year or end of the period that you defined a goal for it is important just to ensure that you're still grounded in that goal. You're still grounded in the results that you're achieving. You're still grounded in the priority that you have um, for a particular goal or a set of goals. Uh, assessment allows you to look at what worked and what you might you know, continue doing as a result of it working for you, what didn't work, and therefore you either have to adjust or throw away or come up with something differently, and then what would you do differently? And that allows you to just refine what it is you're going to work on as you move forward. And again, that doesn't mean, that doesn't matter if it's January 1st or May 1st or December 6th, and you're going to change direction as of December 6th at 1250, and you start working on something else. Assessing is just really a good practice to get into. So all of a sudden, you don't find yourself at the end of a month or quarter or a year, and you don't know where your, your time, energy, and focus went toward, or your creativity that we talked about before. You want to ensure that you're using your time smartly, because guess what? Working hard is just not all of it. You want to work smartly to ensure that whether it's 40 hours a week or 10 hours a week, you're, you're putting the, the best work and the best planning and thought process and execution into whatever it is that you're doing. And it doesn't matter if, you know, no one's impressed by someone saying they work seven days a week. I don't try to impress you when I say I work seven days a week. I'd rather impress you by the things I'm accomplishing as a result of working a day or seven days a week. And, but I also have to say I'm not looking to impress you. <laughs> and I don't want you working to impress other people either. I just want you to be working smartly to achieve the goals and the riches that you want and you deserve in this one lifetime that you have. All right? All right. So we're going to take one last break because we still have a few minutes to address a couple more questions that we have. You are listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. We are inspiring individuals around the globe to discover, confront, and shed their bitches of fear, insecurity, and negativity so they can create the riches in their career, business, and life they deserve. Be sure to check out Bernadette's book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business. Available on Amazon and SheddingTheBitch.com. We also want to thank our sponsors, TSR Consulting, who offers a broad range of tax services for small to corporate-sized clients. Go to TSRConsulting.com to learn more. And Parker House Virtual Services, who provides virtual assistance and social media support for small to medium-sized businesses. Email Deborah Parker at DebraParker78 at gmail.com for more information. To become a sponsor or advertiser on our program, email us at mediarelations at sheddingthebitch.com. Shedding the Bitch Radio airs every Tuesday at noon Eastern Time. Be sure to go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash sheddingthebitchradio and follow the program for all of the updates and announcements of our guests and show topics. Now let's return to Bernadette and Shedding the Bitch Radio. Well, 
Welcome back, everyone. This is Ask Bernadette. I'm taking your business, career, and life questions and providing you some tips, advice, and some tough love at times, at times. <laughs> but whatever question that you have, whatever story or challenge you might be dealing with, and you need a little guidance, maybe a little push, then always come to Shed the Bitch on Facebook and pose your question. Uh, you can even do it in our, face, our private Facebook group that we've established just for this purpose, because many of you say that uh, you don't necessarily want to share that out in the public domain, like Facebook or Twitter. So you can always go to Facebook groups, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash shift to riches, and we've started a, a new private group where you can always go out there and have a nice, safe, fun, energetic, supportive group of people to uh, get some support from. But we do take them all, all month long on our Shedding the Bitch Facebook page and bring them right here on the Shedding the Bitch radio once a month. So uh, be sure that no matter what you do, you get the support and the uh, help that you need in order to create the riches and life you deserve. All right? So I am compressing this last question down significantly because it could take up just the build up to the question. It could take uh, more time than we actually have, have left. So their question basically comes down to this. <laughs> I really screwed up at something really big in the workplace. What do I do? Now, yeah, it's way too, it's way too long of a uh, story to uh, kind of share with you right now. But so say you just made a really big faux pas and, uh, you know, uh, or maybe it's at work, at home, uh, amongst your peers, maybe it's online. Uh, in this case, it's at, at work. Something got really screwed up that caused some, um, uh, not money issues, but definitely process issues, regardless of the situation. What do you do when you screwed up? Ask up. Call it whatever you want to call it. What do you do? Well, we talk about this a lot, guys. So hopefully my repetition of this answer uh, kind of takes hold. But the first thing you need to do is just breathe. Absolutely breathe. Take a deep breath. Kind of get yourself grounded. Yes, your head is swirling. You're probably, your heart's racing. You're getting kind of feverish, those feverish heat strokes running through your body. Maybe your hair is standing on end. You're starting to breathe heavy, more of a panic than anything else. And you're just kind of creating all kinds of drama between your two ears. Breathe. Breathe. Then simply own up to whatever it is that you've done. Now, I can, you know, I can turn, turn to hope that you relate to it by some of the technical issues we have here on Shedding the Bitch Radio. Uh, some of the things that I, you know, might work on with my clients that get screwed up. Uh, we all make mistakes. We all have technical failures. <laughs> we all screw up in some way, shape, or form, and the only thing that we could do is be a big man or woman and own up to it. So after you breathe and after you've calmed yourself down and after you've grounded yourself and you stop playing games in your head and start stop creating a lot of different scenarios that nine out of ten of them won't happen, you just simply own up to whatever it is that you've done. Now, that might mean going to the boss. That might mean going to the team. That might mean, you know, going online. That might mean coming on the radio and declaring your screw-up, whatever that might mean. Just own up to it. And then also, as you're owning up to it, you may have already established solutions to the problem. You found ways to rectify the situation. You gotten back to whoever it is maybe that you screwed up on and you figured it out and resolved the issue. 
the worst thing you could allow happen is your what's between your two ears to totally create a bigger problem that might not exist. So don't go and exasperate your, the, your own situation. Try to remain calm. Try to sit down. Think through what it is that's happened. Come up with a solution to it or, or at least steps to solving it and then going and putting those things in place. And, and the best thing you can do is just simply say, you know what, I screwed up. Don't deflect. Don't blame someone else. Even I'm going to own up to the fact that I sat here and said, oh, blah, talk radio, you know, blah, 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 blah. No, it got screwed up, and I need to find a solution to the problem. Okay? And you can do that, too. You can do that, too. So I hope that helped. I realized the time uh, we were kind of getting squeezed. Uh, and uh, I promise and may, we'll make a commitment to look into the, the issues that we're having here. So our next uh, Ask a Bernadette is as clean as it can be. I want to thank everybody for joining today. And for those of you who posed your questions, thank you so much. You're getting a PDF copy of my book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch. And I'll look forward to talking to you right back here on Shed the Bitch Radio this time next week, noon Eastern time, next Tuesday. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bose. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like breakup R&B intense. I thought you said you love a sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. If your family loves the great outdoors every season, there's only one place to go this season. Cabela's Christmas Sale. Shop for great deals on their favorite outdoor brands, like $100 off a of Lowrance Hook 4 Fish Finder, $100 off a of Vortex Spitfire Red Dot Sight, and get up to 60% off at our huge sale on select hunting gear. Plus, hurry in for Saturday 8 a.m. doorbusters, where the first 250 in line will receive a free giveaway. See store for details. Find great deals for everything on their wish list, only at Cabela's. Shop in-store and online at cabelas.com.